Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year to one and all. We're going to bring you some Legends of Boxing PC game. Four tremendous fights from the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. The main event scheduled for 15 rounds the rematch Gene Tunney the heavyweight champion of the world defends against George Foreman they fought to a 12 round draw in their first matchup second draw Tunney has fought remember he fought that draw with Norton before decisioning him Tunney did win the title from Lennox Lewis the vacant title so that's a rematch 15 rounds Co-main event, another rematch, this one for the middleweight championship of the world. Vacant title at stake once again. Marvelous Marvin Hagler takes on the man from Argentina, Carlos Manzone. They drew over 15 rounds. Then we have a USBA heavyweight title matchup. Sonny Liston climbs right back in the ring after annihilating The man from Galveston, Texas, Jack Johnson, in one round, knocking him cold. Liston won the vacant title against Rocky Marciano via close decision. Will take on Jess Willard, the giant, from Kansas. Willard gets this title opportunity after knocking out Marvis Frazier in nine rounds. But up first... The vacant USBA middleweight championship. Thomas the Hitman Hearns versus Rocky Graziano. 12 rounds. Joining us here at ringside at the Superdome. Steeler fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Hope all is well. Let's make sure we have it in 12 rounds. We do. Let's go to the preview. Thomas the Hitman Hearns from Detroit, Michigan, also known as the Motor City Cobra, will be taking on Rocky Graziano from New York, New York. Both former middleweight champions in reality. Hearns, record 61-5-1 with 48 stoppages. Rocky Graziano, 67-10-6 with 52 stoppages. Hearns is 1-1. One and one. In our Legends of Boxing universe, he defeated John Mugambi via decision, though he went down, and then was stopped on cuts by Frank the Animal Fletcher. Fletcher would go on to lose to Hagler for the vacant USBA title. Rocky Graziano makes his debut in our Legends of Boxing universe. Hearns is a pressure fighter, so is Graziano, and they're going to be even here. So it's going to go off the 20-sided die roll, I do believe. Endurance, Hearns a 22, Graziano a 24. Power, Hearns is an 8, Graziano's a 7. Hearns never fights elusive. He's on the outside 0 through 12, inside 13. Um, uh, inside, excuse me, 12 to 13. Pressure, 14 through 20. Graziano... He doesn't know the word elusive. Outside, zero, uh, one through five. Inside, six through 13. Pressure, 14 through 20. Graziano, hooks, and the right hand. Those are his big punches. Tommy the Hitman Hearns likes to jab and land that big right cross. So here we go, 12 rounds. For the vacant United States Boxing Association middleweight title. Steeler fan 1933. In my universe, Lennox Lewis has been the heavyweight champion for a little over two years. But his next defense is against Big George. I'm looking forward to Foreman getting a shot at the title. And I believe that is with Glory Days Boxing. An excellent card and dice boxing game that can be purchased at SidelineStrategies.com. Created by our good friend Anthony Crooks. You know him as Bleacher Bums Gaming on YouTube. And soon to be coming to PC, hopefully. Another wonderful game to add to your sports sim stable. 
So again, Graziano Hearns, 12 rounds, vacant USBA middleweight title. Fighters are in the ring. As always, referee Dave Gardner brings the pugilist to the center of the ring. There are no questions from the Chiefs' seconds. The fighters touch gloves, they go back to their corners, and they await the bell. Hearns out of the red corner. Graziano out of the blue. You can see the control is 10. It's going to go off that 20-sided die. And here's the bell for round number one. Should be an action-packed fight for as long as it lasts. And it's going to be a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange as they go right at one another. Graziano quickly bores in and bangs to the body. Hearns bangs back. Crowd already on its feet here at the Superdome. Both fighters faint, don't throw. They tie up. Referee Gardner breaks him. Graziano moves forward. Graziano left hook to the body, right hook to the head of Tommy Hearns. Hearns trying to establish his jab. Graziano continues to get inside, and he bangs away to the body, a left and a right. Graziano looking to land the big right hand. And there is a good toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, but Graziano got the better of it. It was the final right hand in that exchange that rattled Tommy Hearns. Good round for Graziano. Both fighters wing, both fighters miss. Hearns wing the left hook from distance. Graziano's loading up on that right hand over time. Now it's Hearns. Behind the jab, two jabs. Right hand was a grazing punch. Under a minute to go, and now Hearns comes back in that toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Uppercut snapping the head of Graziano. Both fighters landed, but again, this time it was Hearns getting the better of it. Graziano comes right back, and he bangs the body and launches a wild right hand that clips Hearns' head. We give that round to Rocky Graziano. Graziano now down to 20 endurance points. Hearns, 19. Let's see what the ringside score. They gave it to Graziano also. Round two, scheduled for 12. Vacant United States Boxing Association middleweight title on the line. And it's Graziano, again, boring forward. But Hearns meets him at ring center. And it is a right cross, left hook, and another right cross landed by Graziano. Hearns is bleeding from the mouth. Graziano, can he capitalize? Hearns trying to punch away. Left uppercut, right hand, and Graziano is staggered. The big booming right hand by the Motor City Cobra hurts Rocky Graziano. Hearns wings an uppercut. Graziano stays low and ties him up. Referee Dave Gardner breaks them. Oh, both fighters clash heads as they're trying to get inside and bang. They seem okay. Graziano lands a hook to the body, but not the right hand to the head. And there's another even toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange at ring center. Graziano and Hearns trying to get their pound of flesh. It's Graziano boring in. It's Graziano with a left hook to the body and a right hook to the head. Hearns takes a step back. Graziano pursues. Now Hearns throws. He misses with a wild hook. No counter by Graziano. Graziano staying low. Graziano under a minute to go. And Graziano bangs the body with both hands. And there's the bell. I give that round to Rocky Graziano. Hearns loses five endurance points. Graziano loses three. Hearns down to 14. Graziano 17. Ringside scorer gives it to Graziano. 2-0 for Graziano. Round three, scheduled for 12. Vacant USBA title on the line. Oh, they clash heads again. And Hearns has a major cut over his right eye. And Graziano has some swelling under his left eye. So they have reported that. Let's see how that plays out. Blood now in the eyes of Tommy Hearns. Graziano bangs the body with a right and then a left. Both fighters exchange. Left hook by Hearns, right hand by Graziano. That blood is bothering Tommy. He has blood over the eye and a bloody mouth. Both fighters faint but don't throw. You can see Graziano. Graziano trying to land the booming right hand. Graziano wings a right and a left and he misses. No counter by Hearns. Hearns knows he's in deep trouble with those cuts. Here comes Tommy. Tommy with a left uppercut, right hand, left hook. And Graziano, Graziano is hurt again. Hearns bleeding, banging away with a double left hook. 
One to the body and one to the head of Rocky Graziano. Blood still flowing from Hearns. Graziano loads up, misses with the right hand, but lands a grazing left uppercut. Final 30 seconds. It's Hearns punching at the bell. Two jabs and a right cross. And Graziano felt those blows. As he goes gingerly back to his corner, I give that round to Thomas the Hitman Hearns. We prepare for round number four. Hearns down to 10 endurance points. Graziano down to 13. Referee Dave Gardner is mic'd up and in the chat. Cutter Historical is also here. Check out both those wonderful channels. Cutter Historical did some title bout championship boxing on the PC. Ringside score gives that round to Hearns. 2-1, Graziano, we see it the same. Round four, and it's Graziano raging out against Tommy Hearns. In the Hearns corner, they want him to work behind the jab and from distance. It's Graziano, and he bangs away with those hooks to the body. Good job by Rocky Graziano. Now Graziano and Hearns tie up. Graziano walks Hearns back. He works the free hand of the rib cage. Referee Dave Gardner breaks them. And again, Graziano is mauling and brawling. Referee Gardner breaks them. Graziano looking to load up. Left hook, right hand! And Hearns wobbles back into the ropes! Graziano going after him! Graziano just windmilling punches! Nailing Hearns over and over again! Hearns pushes him away! Hearns trying to get off the ropes, he does. There's the jab and a right hook to the body. Graziano trying to get in tight. Even exchange by both fighters. Graziano with a right hook to the body. Hearns with a left hook to the head. Graziano gets in punching range. And there it is. Right hand to the jaw of Hearns. Right, left hook to the body of Tommy. Graziano bores in. Graziano wings wildly. Hearns counters with a right hand. And Graziano just shoves him away. But he walks back on spaghetti legs to his corner. So both fighters stagger one another in this tremendous middleweight contest from the Superdome here in Louisiana, New Orleans. Boy, it's as hot as Cajun cooking. Spicy. Graziano down to nine endurance points. Hearns down to seven. Hearns again has that bad cut near that right eye caused by a clash of heads. Graziano had some swelling from that clash. Hearns also bleeding from the mouth. We have a dead even fight here. I'm in agreement there. It's close. It's close. Round five, scheduled for 12. The vacant United States Boxing Association title on the line. And it's Graziano rushing forward. Hearns trying to stay behind the jab. Left hook to the body. Right hand to the head. And Hearns pushes Graziano away. Graziano continues to bore forward and he bangs the body. Graziano continues to pressure. Wings left and right. Hearns comes back with a right cross. And Graziano's in serious trouble. Hearns pushes him away as Graziano tries to tie him up. And Hearns opening up. Left uppercut. Right hand. Left hook to the head. Graziano goes into the ropes. Hearns looking to load up. And there he's measuring. And he lands the right hand. But Graziano is able to dip away from it. Graziano's on the ropes. His legs are not there. He's fighting off the ropes. Hearns in the toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Hearns measuring, measuring, and there's the right cross by Tommy. Under a minute to go. A huge round for Tommy Hearns. Graziano ties him up and walks him back on spaghetti legs towards ring center. Referee Gardner breaks them. 30 seconds to go, and it's Hearns punching at the bell. The booming right cross after the jab. And Graziano buckles again, and the bell saves him. Oh, my Lord. Graziano eating everything, including the kitchen sink. So after two very good rounds by Rocky Graziano, it's been all Tommy, the hitman, Hearns. Hearns down to five endurance points. Graziano down to three. We approach the midway point of this 12-round USBA title bout for the vacant middleweight title. Again, Graziano on the ringside score took the first two rounds. Hearns, three, four, and five. Can Graziano turn the tide of battle? Hearns still bleeding. They've done a decent job on that cut caused by the clash of heads, but he's bleeding above the right eye and blood from the mouth. Round six, scheduled for 12, and Hearns taking control right away. Two jabs and a right hand. Now Graziano gets in tight, and he bangs a left hook and a right hand to the head, and Hearns 
Hearns buckles. Hearns tries to tie him up. Graziano pushes him off. Graziano cannot land solid as it's all Tommy Hearns octopus arms. But Graziano keeps him pinned to the ropes. He bangs the body hard and lands a right uppercut, snapping the head of Tommy the Hitman Hearns. Now Hearns ties him up and slides away from the ropes. Graziano slowly pursues, looking to land the big right hand. Wings an uppercut and then a right to the body. The left uppercut grazed Tommy Hearns, but the right hand caught him in the rib cage. Graziano again in control. Graziano, right hand to the body, left uppercut to the head of Tommy Hearns. Under a minute to go. Hearns tries to reestablish his jab. There's two jabs by Tommy. 30 seconds to go. Graziano comes back. Left hook, right hand to the jaw. Right hand to the jaw. Hearns buckles and the bell saves Hearns this time. Holy cow. Back and forth they go. Big punches. Neither pugilist has touched the canvas, though they have weebled and wobbled. That is definitely a Graziano round. We have a dead even after six. Graziano will go fatigued. Hearns has one endurance point. At ringside, Sports Time Machine. Check out that wonderful channel. D. Scott Howard, fresh from her hockey game last night. How the... How is the Goat Whisperer doing? Cleve Baseball Fan 879, hope all is well. Dave Gardner is here. Check out that wonderful YouTube channel. Of course, Digital Dice with Uncle Ron Juckett on Spreaker or wherever fine podcasts can be listened to. Cutter Historical, check out that wonderful channel. He did a boxing card using Title Belt Championship Boxing. I'm going to be listening to that at work tomorrow. And, of course, Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Round 7 coming up. Wow! The ringside score gave it 10-8 to Graziano. Because Graziano did really unload a ton of punches and wobbled Hearns very badly. They gave it a 10-8 round, so they have Graziano up by one. I have it even. Round seven scheduled for 12, and Hearns comes out to take control. Hearns lands a jab in the right hand. Graziano comes right back. Bangs the body. Hearns getting from distance. There's a good combination. The jab, then the left hook to the body, and then a right hook to the body. Good job by Tommy. Tommy establishing that jab. And again, it's a jab, and then the left to the body. It's a double left. One to the face of Graziano, and a hard left to the rib cage of the man from New York. Hearns working the jab overtime. Continues. This time it is a jab and a right hook to the body. Graziano moves forward. Graziano lands an overhand right and a left hook. A minute to go here in round number seven. Graziano bores in. There's a right hand and a left hook to the head of Tommy Hearns. Hearns blinking. That blood continues to flow. Under a minute to go. Graziano forcing Hearns back. And Graziano doubles up on a left hook. And then a chopping right hand as Hearns trapped down the ropes. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. It catches Graziano coming forward. Her, Tommy got the better of that. Exchange at the bell. Holy cow. Hearns is fatigued. Control goes up to 12. Defense, well, it's non-existent anyway. Power drops to 5. Graziano's fatigued. His power already dropped to 4. Graziano has a slight edge in control. Round 8 scheduled for 12, and it's Tommy Hearns behind the jab. Again, it's that jab, the double jab, and then the left hook to the body. Working the left hand overtime, Graziano ties up on the inside, trying to rough up the hitman. Referee Gardner breaks them. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange at ring center. Hearns establishes distance with that jab. He jabs, and boom, with the right cross! And Graziano shakes his head no. He walks through this one. Hearns is in dismay. Hearns loads up again. Jab right hand. Graziano just continues to come forward, but he's eating everything. And that combination stopped Graziano for a moment. It was a jab, a right hand, and a left uppercut. But Graziano again comes forward, but it's been all Tommy Hearns. There's a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Fighters landing grazing punches. Under a minute to go. Both fighters faint, but don't throw. 30 seconds to go. Graziano loads up. And he lands the left hook to the body and a right hook to the head. Good round for Tommy Hearns, though. Let's go to the ringside scorer. <clears throat> Graziano's chin drops to a four. His will drops to a five. 
Round nine is almost upon us. The ringside scorer has it 76-75, Graziano. That 10-8 round without the knockdown looms huge on the unofficial scorecard. I doubt the judges actually gave a 10-8 round. D. Scott Howard says, I'm snowed in with over 12 inches and still coming with minus 21 degree wind chill factor. What Utah Mike calls spring, LOL. Will you stay safe, my friend? That's a lot of snow and a horrible temperature. Round 9, scheduled for 12. Hearns quickly takes control. He lands a grazing right cross. Hearns again behind the jab. Hooks to the body. Left jab to the head. Right hook to the body. Hearns continues to work behind that jab. A 1-2 catches. Graziano moving forward. Graziano is tired. He's not throwing. He's eating a lot of leather. And again, the jab in the right hand from the Motor City Cobra catches Rocky Graziano moving forward. Both fighters look to load up but do not throw. Now Graziano ties up. Graziano looking for a second win. Referee Dave Gardner breaks them. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. And that favored Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Graziano backs up a bit. And then begins his plod forward, and he plods into a left hook to the body and a right cross to the jaw. 30 seconds to go, and another toe to toe exchange at the bell. Graziano goes back to his corner, breathing quite heavily. Tommy Hearns, this is a very close fight, but it looks like Tommy is taking control. Control factors are now even. Graziano's power drops to a three. Hearns' power is still a five. With rounds 10, 11, and 12 to come, the unofficial score at ringside, 85-85. There's the bell, and it's Hearns quickly again. There's the jab and the right cross. Good scoring combination. And Hearns lands on the belt line there. Hearns continues to punch. Graziano eats a jab and another right hand. And Graziano begins to bleed from his mouth. He also has swelling near the left eye. Hearns looking to open up. Two jabs and a right hand. Graziano being battered now. Graziano gets nailed with a left hook and a right hand. Both shots to the head. Graziano fading. Graziano fading, backing up. Now it's Hearns measuring. It's Hearns measuring. He wings, he misses. Graziano comes back with an overhand right. Catching Hearns square in the face. Hearns looking to measure. Hearns, oh! Hearns went low with that body punch. Referee Dave Gardner gives him a warning under a minute to go. And it's Tommy Hearns throwing a big right hand. And the tiring Graziano somehow evades it. 30 seconds to go. And again, Hearns lands to the belt line and the Graziano corner is screaming that those are low punches. Graziano survived a beating in round 10. They sit Graziano on his stool. Try to work that cut near that mouth and the swelling. Graziano looks badly tired. Hearns is also breathing heavily. Emmanuel Stewart in the Tommy the Hitman Hearns corner saying you got him Tommy you got him. Round 11, scheduled for 12. It's been action-packed for sure, though no pugilist has touched the canvas in this mauling brawl between two big punchers. 95-94 Hearns unofficially by our ringside score. Here's round 11. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. As Graziano lands to the body, Hearns lands to the head. Hearns behind the jab. There's the jab and the right cross. Graziano has no answer for it but to eat it. Both fighters wing. It was a big right hand by Graziano and a left hook by Hearns, and they both miss. Hearns quickly comes back with two jabs and a right hand. Graziano now has a cut near the right eye. He, his face is a mess, but Hearns' face is also a mess. Graziano ducks him away from the hook, but is too tired to counter. Both fighters land. Ring center, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Graziano still able to cut off the ring, but there's a lot of zip off his punches. Tommy looking to load up, and there's the left hook to the body and a right hand to the head of Graziano. Under a minute to go here in round number 11. And again, the jab in the right hand. Catch Graziano scare, square in the face. 30 seconds to go. Graziano loads up with a right and a left hook to the head of Tommy Hearns, but it was not enough. Three more minutes. Who would have thunk it?
Graziano, in our eyes, will need a knockout. It is a close fight, but I don't think he can win it on the scorecards. Graziano's power is down to a two. Hearns' power down to a four. Hearns' will a seven. His chin a five. Graziano's will is a four. His chin is a three. The final three minutes of a heck of a middleweight brawl for the vacant United States boxing title here at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. The first of a tremendous fight card to still to come. Here we go. They gave that round to Graziano. I don't know how. Again, unofficially. So they have it very close. I have Hearns ahead by two points. Here we go, round 12, and it's Graziano raging out against Tommy Hearns, and Graziano lands the overhand right, and a grazing left hook to the head. Graziano again, there's the right hand and a left to the body. Graziano bores forward, Hearns meets him with the right cross and a left hook to the body. Now Graziano just continues to bang away, a left right to the body and a chopping right hand to the head. Graziano forces Hearns back. Graziano pursues left hook, right hand, and Hearns felt those blows. Graziano bores forward. Graziano lands a left uppercut and a right hand to the head. Hearns dangerously close to the ropes. Graziano closes in with a right left right to the body. Under a minute to go and it's all Rocky Graziano again a right left right to the body. 30 seconds to go and at the bell Graziano bores in and referee Gardner breaks them. Graziano definitely took round 12 in our eyes as Tommy Hearns was in survival mode. Unofficially, the ringside scorer has Rocky Graziano, the winner, 114-113. I have Tommy Hearns, the winner, 114-113. So this bout could go either way. It is very, very close. Who will take the vacant USBA middleweight title? We go to the judges. 115-112 Graziano. 115-112 Graziano. 114-114. Even the winner and new United States Boxing Association middleweight champion, Rocky Graziano. So Graziano takes it on two judges' scorecards, 115-112. The third had it even. Stevens, 114-114. You can't argue with that. It was a very close fight. And if you give some of those close rounds the other way, I had Hearns by a point. But it's Rocky Graziano who raises his arms victoriously and takes... The United States Boxing Association middleweight title looking for a title shot against either Hagler or Munzone in the near future. Tommy Hearns loses his second tough bout in our Legends of Boxing universe. Mark Jones has joined us. As Mark Jones says, Hearns always has a bad round 12, and that cost him. That bad round, well, Graziano was ahead, but it didn't help, obviously. And I wonder if they did give... Graziano a 10-8 round like the ringside scorer did no they never did they just the closer rounds there were some close rounds I gave to Hearns that they gave to Graziano so there's that scorecard here very close fight but Rocky Graziano claims once again the vacant USBA middleweight title we will move on and I, I don't know how these other fights can top it as Cutter Historical says yes Close out on that fight. Three more fights to come, including the main event, Gene Tunney, the rematch with George Foreman. They fought to a 12-round draw, but I swear to God I made this one a 15-round fight. There it is. I didn't mess it up this time. <laughs> Sonny Liston, who took the USBA vacant title from Rocky Marciano on a close decision. Then we thought at the Houston Astrodome, a tough fight. We thought it was going to be a tough fight against the Galveston Giant. And he knocked out the Galveston Giant, Jack Johnson, in one round. He destroyed him. It was brutal. So Sonny Liston takes on Jess Willard. Jess Willard knocked out Marvis Frazier in nine. And it, this looks to be a whitewash for Sonny Liston. Liston still wants to stay active as he looks for a title shot against the winner of Tunney or Foreman. 
Doug Justice has joined us. Hope all is well, Doug. D. Scott Howard says, this fight will make a great story for Rocky to tell on the Mike Douglas show in the 60s. Oh, he was on, yeah, Rocky Graziano is a hell of a guy. Funny, funny guy. Grew up very tough. Never lost his good heart, though. Tremendous story. Maybe not the greatest fighter of all times, but Rocky Graziano, the middleweight, was one of the best human beings of all times. Just read his biography. It's incredible. Went through a lot of tough stuff. So here we go. Let's preview the USBA heavyweight title fight. And again, Liston is a big favorite here. Sonny Liston, overall record, man from St. Louis, Missouri, former heavyweight champion, 54-0 and with 39 stoppages. In our Legends of Boxing universe, he is 2-0. and He knocked out Jack Johnson in one round to retain his title that he won from Rocky Marciano on a majority points decision. It was a vacant title then. Jess Willard, 22-5-1 with 20 KOs. The Giant from Kansas knocked out Marvis Frazier in his Legends of Boxing debut. As Sports Time Machine says, Big Easy Brawl for all from the Superdome. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Remember to check out all these wonderful channels. Sports Time Machine. With our good friend, Mr. Utah Mike, Cleve Baseball Fan 879, Dave Gardner, Cutter Historical. Thank you. Check out all those wonderful channels. Also, thank you to Mark Jones, Doug Justice, D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer, and our good friend, Steeler Fan 1933, a.k.a. Matt. So again, listen, overwhelming favorite to retain his USBA title and move into that number one slot for the heavyweight championship. Here we go. Center of the ring for the USBA heavyweight title, scheduled for 12. Listing out of the red corner, Jess Willard, a giant of a man, out of the blue corner. Willard, if he has any hope at all, needs to land the big right uppercut and hurt Sonny Liston, somehow take him out. There are no questions from the chief seconds. Both fighters touch gloves. They go back to their corners. They await the bell in Dave Gardner's words of fight. Here's the bell for round number one. Liston will have a tremendous edge in control. You can see the eight. The lower the number, the better. Twelve for Jess Willard. Liston has the edge in power. Eight to six. Endurance. Twenty-five for Willard. Twenty-two for Liston. And uh, I believe Liston looks to land from the outside. Both fighters are going to fight from the outside here. And here we go. And it's Sonny Liston taking control. Liston misses two jabs as Giant Jess gets his arms up to parry them away. Ooh! Willard holds on to Liston and just keeps punching away. Referee Gardner breaks them. Cutter Historical at ringside says, I have a feeling Liston will have this one. I'm in agreement there. But Willard taking it to Liston at the moment. And he holds him in place. He lands the right uppercut. And Liston just shoves him away. And you can see the look on Willard's face after nailing him with a good right uppercut. It didn't even phase the bear, Sonny Liston. Liston comes right back with a feint on the jab and a left hook to the body of Jess Willard. Willard comes back. Lands a jab of his own. Willard not a big combination puncher. And there, as I said that, Willard lands the jab, holds on to Sonny Liston, and bangs him with the right hand. Referee Gardner breaks them. Willard, having a good round one, lands another jab. Doesn't really throw the right cross. There's a hook to the body, and then a chopping right hand to Sonny Liston's head. Then Willard keeps his distance. Liston pawing, not looking to throw, and Willard's punching in there. Willard lands a jab and a right hand. Nice round by Jess Willard. We give it to him. Liston drops down to 19 endurance points. Jess Willard, 23. It was a really nice controlled round for Jess Willard. Liston seems okay in his corner. In the sunny Liston corner, they want him to pick up the pace. Liston's going to move inside. Willard will stay on the outside. That's where he prefers to be. Round two. 
Liston gets in tight and he bangs away with the body. Thudding body punches to Jess Willard. Both fighters wing and throw. Willard's got to watch out when he throws that uppercut from distance. Liston works his way in behind the jab and again he bangs the body of the giant from Kansas. He's a thudding body puncher. Liston lands an uppercut on the inside. It was a grazing punch as Willard tried to push him down. Willard trying to keep distance. Liston is easily able to close in and bang. And now a left hook to the body and a right hand to the head. Sonny Liston with a very good round. Both fighters throw and miss. We have a minute to go here in round two. Liston definitely heeding the advice of his corner to punch and get inside. And here's Liston again. Bangs a left and a right to the rib cage of Jess Willard. That will wear down a man. Willard looks to hold and land the uppercut, but he misses both shots. Liston looking to load up. Booyah! Right hand, left hook to the head, and a right to the body at the bell. Tremendous round for Sonny Liston. Liston down to 16 stamina points. Willard down to 20. Willard will stay on the outside. And in the Liston corner, they keep telling Sonny, get in tight, get in tight, bang him out, bang him out. After two rounds, we have it one even. So does the ringside scorer. Round three, scheduled for 12, the United States Boxing Association heavyweight title on the line. Liston quickly moves in. Willard cannot keep him at bay, and Liston hooks to the body again. It is a left-right hook to the body. You can hear those thudding body blows, and you can almost hear Willard wince. And again, Liston bangs with a short left to the hook to the body and a right hook to the head. He's got to punch up a bit on the much taller... Jess Willard, Liston punching away, banging away, banging away. Willard giving ground. Willard with the pawing jab. That's not going to stop a very angry Sonny Liston. And now the right hand, an overhand right, grazes Willard. And then a good left hook to the side of Jess Willard. Both fighters faint but don't throw. Willard trying to keep Liston at bay. Willard's only hope to land that uppercut. Can he do it here? Nope, two jabs, no more. Liston gets underneath the jabs and bangs a left to the body and a right hand to the head. Willard felt that. We have under a minute to go and it's all Sonny Liston. Liston jabs his way in and bangs the body again with the right hand. At the bell, it's Liston firing away. He lands an overhand right now, left to the rib cage as Willard was dangerously close to those ropes. Another good round for Sonny Liston. Liston drops to 13 endurance points. Willard, 17. Willard's going to have to open up a little more. Round 4, scheduled for 12. And again, it's Sonny Liston pressing. And Sonny Liston working the body. Three hands, I mean three punches land. Not three hands, but Willard's probably thinking he's getting hit by three hands. They're thudding body blows by Liston. Liston continues to hook to the body with a left and a right. Willard slowing down. Liston lands on the belt line. There are a few Jess Willard fans here at the Superdome. There's some boos coming out. Liston behind the jab. Throws the right cross, but Willard gets his arms up. A la like when he fought Jack Johnson. But it's all Sonny Liston. There's a left hook to the body. And he brings it up to the head, snapping the tall one, Jess Willard, the giant from Kansas. Willard comes back with a jab and then a right uppercut and shoves Sonny Liston away. Liston. Gets right back in there, banging away to the body. You can hear the blows. They are just painful to hear. Thud, thud, thud. Listen again. Winging punches like a madman. Willard ties him up. And now Willard digs a left to the body and a right uppercut to the head of Sonny Liston. 30 seconds to go. And there's the bell. Both fighters faint, then throw and miss. Willard did a little better, but I don't think he took round four. Liston down to 10 endurance points. Willard down to 14. I'm in agreement with the ringside score. 3-1 for Liston. We only give round one to Willard. He was able to land his uppercut, but to no avail in round one. In the Willard corner, they're telling him, Jess, you got, you got to do something here. Round five, scheduled for 12. And now Willard's going to do something. Willard holds and hits. He continues to hit, and referee Gardner gives him a slight warning. Willard pushes Liston back, and Willard 
lands a left uppercut right cross Sonny blinking but no blood Liston looks to come back Liston wings wildly he lands Willard looks to land the uppercut he doesn't but a chopping right hand lands on Sonny Liston that punch was going down and it clipped Liston on the forehead Liston a bit of a trouble here and Willard Willard with a right left right Oh, my Lord, the Giant throws a three-punch combination. Liston backs up for a moment, blinks his eyes, and now Willard moves in. They tie up and they break. Willard looking to capitalize, but it's Sonny Liston who punches. Left hook to the body, right hook to the head, and Willard shoves away Sonny Liston. Now Willard holds him. Right hand, left hook, right hand, and Sonny shoves away Jess Willard. Big punches land, but both these big heavyweights taking the punches well. Sonny Liston doubles up with that left hook. One to the rib cage, and then one to the side of the head of the giant from Kansas, the man Jess Willard. Liston again banging away, and Willard backs up. He felt those punches, and there's the bell. Sonny Liston, a very heavy-handed fighter. Both fighters, that was a good action-packed round. I don't know if... I, I, I give it close to li, uh, listed. The ringside score gives it even. After five rounds, 49-47 listed. Liston trying to retain his USBA title. This was supposed to be an easy defense. A little tougher right now than the Sonny Liston people thought. Though he is ahead. A possible world title shot on the line. Round six. And Liston quickly takes control on the inside. Willard cannot keep him at bay. There's a jab and a right hand by Liston. And Jess Willard has, uh, uh, yes, it is some blood under the left eye. So Willard is bleeding. Liston looking to load up. Wings a right and a left. Willard is able to shove him away. Those punches did not land. Liston is not undeterred. He continues to bang. He hooks to the body with a left and a chopping right hand to the head of Jess Willard. Sonny Liston just banging away to that body. Willard continues to retreat. Willard not the most fleet of foot. Continues to paw with the jab. An even exchange. Well, not so much. That right hand snapped the head of Jess Willard. Willard just trying to stay at bay with a pawing jab. Both fighters wing right hands and miss. A minute to go here in round six. And here comes Sonny List. And he bangs a left hook to the body and a right uppercut grazes. That's a, not a good punch really to throw against the taller Jess Willard. Under a minute. Here's Sonny again. Sonny goes back to the body. He bangs hard with a four-punch salvo. Left, right, left, right. Willard has no answer. And, ooh, Sonny goes to the belt line as he continues to ravage Jess Willard's body. Sonny Liston down to three endurance points. Jess Willard down to eight. Now Willard, they have told him in his corner, you've got to change the tide of battle. He told the giant, you got to go after him. You got to go after him. Willard nods his head yes. Sonny Liston is going to meet him toe to toe. They gave round six to Liston. I'm in agreement with that. Here we go. Round seven. And it's Liston again banging away. But Willard was able to smother him. Those blows did score but were not as effective as Sonny Liston would like. Now they smack heads. And Willard has a major cut above his left eye. Willard's in all kinds of trouble here. Sonny Liston looking to load up. There's the jab. Sonny has a good jab. And there's a jab and a right hand. And Willard, a bloody Jess Willard, ties up Sonny Liston, then throws him into the ropes. Willard looking to load up. Jabbing, jabbing, but no right hand. Sonny looks to fight off the ropes, and he bangs his to the body and then a chopping right hand to the face, a bloody face of Jess Willard. Willard backs up towards ring center. Sonny pursues. Willard tries to hold his ground. They tie up. Referee Gardner breaks him. Under a minute to go here in round seven. And it's all Sonny Liston. Right hand, left hook to the head of Jess Willard. 30 seconds to go. Willard fires as he bangs the body with a grazing left hook. Another good round for Sonny Liston. But Liston seems quite fatigued from hitting the human punching bag Jess Willard Liston's power drops to a five round eight 
a bloody Jess Willard still seems fresh. But can he do something? Liston, 69-65 on the ringside score. We have Liston by one more point. Here's round eight. Liston quickly takes control, and he bangs the body again, trying to wear down the big giant from Kansas, Jess Willard. Liston, left hook, right cross. Good job. The left hook was to the body. It's all Sonny Liston, and Liston continues to bang away with a three-punch salvo to the torso of Jess Willard. Willard not throwing. Now Willard, can he land the uppercut? He hooks with the right and then the left. He scored, but they're not big punches. And there's Liston catching Willard in between punches, snapping Willard's head over and over again. Liston pawing with the jab, and booyah with the right hand and a left hook. And Willard wobbles back into the ropes. Liston looking to take out Jess Willard. Lands an uppercut. Willard on the ropes. Willard tries to grab. Liston continues to punch. Right hand, left hook to the body. And that is it. That is it. Referee Dave Garner has stepped in and stopped this bout. A bloody Jess Willard gave it his all. But it was not enough to stop the man from St. Louis, Missouri, Sonny Liston, who continues to march his way to a world title shot against either Gene Tunney or George Foreman here in the main event tonight from the Louisiana Superdome. Sonny Liston retains his USBA title over a game, Jess Willard. Well, Jess, this is no Marvis Frazier you're facing tonight, but I tell you, Jess Willard gave it his all. But a good job by Sonny Liston. Let's go. Again, the ringside score had it 69-65. We had it 70-64, I believe, for Sonny Liston. Let's go to the official scorecards. 69-65, 69-65, 69-64, all for Sonny Liston. So Willard gave it a good effort. He was what you this was what you call a competitive mismatch, but Sonny Liston did what he had to do. He stopped Jess Willard and retains his United States Boxing Association heavyweight title. We now come to our co-main event for the middleweight world championship, the vacant title. And these two pugilists are very familiar with one another as they fought to a 15-round draw. Let's make sure we have it 15 rounds. We do. Excellent. This is the rematch. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. From Brockton, Massachusetts, takes on Carlos Monzon from Santa Fe, Argentina. They fought to a draw in their first bout. Monzon still the number one ranked middleweight. Hagler the number two ranked middleweight. Marvin Hagler overall, in reality, 63-3 and three with two draws, 52 stoppages. Carlos Monzon, 87-3-9 and nine with 59 stoppages. Hagler is a pressure fighter. Monzone is a pressure fighter. Hagler, you can see the 11 next to his control here for against pressure fighters. Monzone's a 10. So Hagler will have a slight edge. A slight edge. Hagler has an edge in endurance, 30 to 26. Hagler has an edge in power, 8 to 7. Hagler never fights elusive. He fights outside 1 through 8, inside 9 through 13, pressure 14 through 20. Munzon on the outside, 1 through 9. 11 through 13 inside, 14 through 20, pressure. Munzon likes to throw the jab in the right hand. Hagler likes to switch southpaw, orthodox, and he likes the hooks, and he has a big cross, whether right cross or left cross. He'll switch up. He's a very, very dangerous, talented fighter. Both fighters in the first fight landed solid punches but never really hurt one another to the extent where they could take one another out. 15 rounds. We do it again. This is rematch number one of this four-fight card extravaganza from the Louisiana Superdome. Hagler, Monzone, two. The main event, Tunney Foreman, two. Let's go to the fight. The vacant world middleweight championship on the line. Both pugilists at ring center. Referee Dave Gardner gives them their final instructions. The Petronellis in the Hagler corner say that uh, Monzone's trunks are kind of high. 
Referee Gardner does point that out and now says that is good on the belt line. It will be good. They touch gloves and they continue to stare down one another. Now they go back to their corners. Hagler out of the red corner. Manzone out of the blue. They await the bell. Hagler will apply pressure. Manzone will try to work behind the jab. Here's the bell. Round number one, scheduled for 15. Vacant World Middleweight Championship on the line from the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. And it's Hagler who takes control. And it's Hagler who bangs away at the body as he presses for it. Hagler fighting southpaw. So he's leading with that right hand, and then he bangs that left hook to the body. Manzone looking to come right back. Manzone lands a jab in a right hand. Hagler presses forward, but he is met by Manzone's fist. Again, a one-two nails Hagler. Hagler trying to get in tight, but he can't. It's Manzone with another jab in a right hand. Manzone really working that combination. Hagler bobs and weaves and uh, throws his punches, but does not land. He does not land. Manzone looking to establish the jab. Hagler gets in, and they both bang away with grazing punches. That was a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange a minute to go here in round number one, scheduled for 15. Hagler ties up Munzone. He tries to break free, but Munzone holds on for dear life. Referee Gardner breaks them. Under a minute, Munzone throws the jab and the right hand, but he misses both. No counter from Hagler. Hagler still in the southpaw stance. Hagler comes in. Hagler comes in. He fainted the right jab he lands the left cross and then a right hook to the body at the bell Hagler drops to 26 endurance points Munzone drops to 24 I give that round to Hagler they give that round even it was a close round we prepare for round two here's the bell Munzone behind the jab and there it is a jab in the right cross he'll do this all day all night all week all year he's just gonna score punches there he tried a hook and he missed badly but Hagler, weary of the right hand, does not counter. Hagler, on the outside, dips in now, and he throws and misses. So Munzone does not counter, but he evades. Hagler lands on the belt line. The Argentinians here in Louisiana, the people who have flown up for this big fight, boo, but it was on the belt line. And we know referee Dave Gardner said that was good. Munzone, behind the jab, misses again. Hagler, looking to establish... Faints, Monzone moves forward, and he nails Monzone with the straight left and then a right to the body. It was a feint of the right jab that moved Monzone into punching range, and Hagler does it again with two right jabs and a left hook to the body. Hagler looking to take control, moves forward, and Monzone catches him with a cross and a left hook. 30 seconds to go. And there's the bell. Oh, nail it. No one threw at the bell. That's another close round. Hagler down to 24 points. Munzone down to 22. Could we get another draw here? And my God, the first two rounds on the ringside scorecard, he gives even. Mark Jones at ringside says, Willard was the biggest underdog since Custard and the Little Bighorn. You are correct. Round three, scheduled for 15. Vacant world middleweight title on the line. Hagler, switched to orthodox. Throws the left jab and the right cross. Good combination there by Marvin Hagler. Munzone looks to come right back, and he comes back with the same combination. Rinse and repeat the left hand and the long right cross. Both fighters from the outside. Munzone has a slight reach advantage, definitely a little height advantage there. Hagler's got to bip and bop and get in. And just as I say that, Hagler throws a straight right to the body and a left hook to the head of Carlos Manzone. Now Manzone ties up Hagler. Referee Gardner breaks them. Back to distance. Hagler's first. Two good jabs. Hagler again. Faints the jab and lands a right hook to the body. Both fighters wing big rights and miss. Under a minute to go here in round three. Very close fight. Munzone ties up Hagler as Hagler got into punching range, did not let his hands go. Munzone does not want to get hit. Under 30 seconds to go. It's Munzone at the bell. Right hand, left hook, right hand. Good rally by Munzone at the end. Does that combination steal in the round? Hagler down to 22 endurance points. Munzone down to 20. Ringside scorer gave that round to Hagler. He did wasn't impressed with the final 
Ratatat by Monzone. Again, Monzone trying to steal the round a la Sugar Ray Leonard against Hagler for the middleweight title. Round four, scheduled for 15. It's Monzone who's first this time. The jab catches Hagler moving into punching range and then a right hook to the body. Hagler, still orthodox, throws the jab. Monzone parries them away but does not counter. Both fighters looking to foot faint. Neither fighter throws. It's Hagler looking to land. There's the jab and a big right hand. And Monzone grabs on. But he seems okay. Good shots by Hagler. Hagler looking to capitalize. There's a jab and another right hand. Monzone blinks, but there's no blood. Carlos very tough. Both fighters in an even exchange, but Hagler's being first. He is winning this round, in our opinion. A minute to go. Here's Hagler. Hagler hooks to the body and a grazing right hand to the head. Both fighters wing punches and miss. 30 seconds to go. It's Hagler and Hagler. Left hook, right hand. And Monzone is down. Monzone is down. The count has reached three. He will get up. He will take the mandatory eight. And the bell will sound. Oh, my Lord. Left hook to the body. And then the right to the head sent the Argentinian to the canvas here at the Superdome. That is a 10-8 round for Hagler. Hagler goes down to 20 endurance points. Monzone, 15. Monzone in his corner, indicating he's okay to Dr. David Little. at ring. He's the ringside physician. Definitely a 10-8 round for Hagler. The ringside scorer has Hagler up 40 to 37. Round five, we'll see if Monzone is recovered. Monzone staying on the outside, Hagler looking to get in and out. But it's Monzone who catches Hagler with a jab and a right hand. And Hagler just smiles at him. He walked through it. And that will give Monzone nightmares. Again, Monzone faints but doesn't fire. Monzone behind the jab lands a right cross. Hagler continues to move forward. Hagler wings wildly, misses. Monzone on the counter, left hook, right hand. Hagler takes a step back. Monzone does not pursue. Very leery of the Hagler power. Monzone works the jab. It was a grazing jab with the right hand. But they were scoring blows. Monzone misses a big combination. No retaliation by Hagler. Under a minute to go. A good round for Monzone, who was dropped in the fourth. Hagler gets inside, but he misses. Monzone shoves him away and sidesteps him. Hagler... 30 seconds at the bell. Hagler lands the lead right, and there's your bell. But I give that round to Carlos Monzone. He did a nice job coming back from the knockdown in round four. We're in agreement with the ringside scorer on that round. Hagler down to 17 endurance points. Monzone down to 13. Round six, scheduled for 15. Vacant world middleweight title on the line here at the Superdome. Monzone, there it is. He jabbed and landed the right hook to the body. Hagler, I think Hagler want to put some pressure on Monzone, but he's trying to outbox him. As Hagler works his way in, bippity bops to the body and moves away. Hagler again fires. Left hand, right hook. Monzone blinks, but there's no blood. Hagler being first. There's the right and a left hook to the head. Monzone not punching. As Hagler hooks to the body, missed the right hand to the head, though. Now Monzone looks to capitalize as he goes right-left to the body with hooks. Both fighters wing right hands and miss. Under a minute to go here in round six. It seems to be a Hagler round. Hagler with a double left hook. Digs the body and up to the head. Monzone backs up. Monzone trying to establish his jab, and there it is, the one-two. The right hand was a grazing punch, but the jab was a good one. We give that round to Hagler unofficially. Hagler, 15 endurance points. Monzone down to 10. Let's go to the ringside scorer. They give it to Hagler also. Unofficially, the ringside scorer has it 59-56. The man from Brockton, Massachusetts, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Hagler did drop Monzone in round Four at the bell. Monzone got up at the count of three, took the mandatory eight count from referee Dave Gardner. Round seven, scheduled for 15. 
World title at stakes, middleweights. And it's Monzone jabbing and then hooking to the body and then coming back up to the head. Left jab, right hook, and then the right hook to the head. And Monzone punching, lands the right cross and the left hook to the body. Hagler trying to get his pound of flesh. Two jabs, Hagler back. He's, he's scored better in the orthodox stance, believe it or not. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, both fighters score. It was an even exchange. Here comes Hagler. Right cross, left hook. Snapping the head of the Argentinian. Oh, toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, but this time Monzone got the better of it. It was a right cross and a left uppercut as Hagler was throwing. Snapping the head of Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Hagler pounds his face and says, come on, Carlos. Oh, Monzone lands body shots to the belt line. Under a minute to go here in round seven. Monzone looking to come back. There's that left jab. Hagler moves close, and then Monzone hits him with the right uppercut. Under 30 seconds. It's Hagler at the bell, rat-a-tatting Mon Monzone. Four-punch combination. It wasn't pretty, but they landed. And Monzone goes back to his corner. Monzone's chin is a nine. His will is a seven after that knockdown. We give that round to Marvin Hagler. Hagler still with 12 endurance points. Monzone down to six. They gave that round to Carlos Monzone. So they have it 68-66 for Hagler. We have Hagler up by, I believe, four points. Very close rounds, though. Here's round eight scheduled for 15. It's about the halfway point of this world title fight for the vacant middleweight title. Hagler... Doubles up with the left hook and then a right hand. And Monzone is hurt. He is hurt. Hagler looking to load up. And he hooks to the body but misses the right hand to the head. Monzone trying to survive. Hagler bangs the body. Monzone near the ropes. Counters with a left hook and a right hand. Monzone slides to ring center. Hagler pursues. They stand toe to toe. Monzone lands the uppercut. Monzone... Fighting on the inside, short left, right hooks to the head of Hagler. Monzone is being first, and as I say that, it's Hagler who comes back with a short one-two combination, snapping the head of Monzone, but Monzone goes right back at Hagler. Monzone misses his shots. Hagler looking to load up now. Both fighters faint. They tie up, and they push one another away. Final moments of round eight, and it's Marvin Hagler with a left hook to the body and a chopping right hand to the head of Carlos Monzon. Hagler still with eight endurance points. Monzon down to two. I like Hagler in that round. But the ringside scorer does not. The ringside scorer now has it 77-76. Oh boy. Another close fight here. Round nine. Monzone takes control, lands the jab in the right hand. Monzone back at distance now. Hagler back at distance. I don't know if that's the way you should fight, Carlos. Monzone doesn't really like to fight on the inside. He's capable, but he doesn't like it. Monzone misses the jab. No retaliation by Hagler. Hagler foot faints. Monzone moves forward, and he is met with a right hand and a left hook to the body. The right hand caught him in the face. The left to the rib cage. Hagler follows up. With a right hand, but he misses Monzone. Good job by Carlos. Monzone, there's a jab and a good stiff right hand. Snapping the head of Hagler. Monzone looks to follow up with the same combination. Hagler blocks it. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange as they fight towards ring center. Both fighters landing a 1-2. Scoring blows, nothing special. Hagler hooks to the body. 30 seconds to go. And there's the bell. No one threw. Hagler down to six endurance points. Monzone is fatigued. Monzone's control goes up to an 11. Defense drops to a 2. Power drops to a 4. So Hagler probably has maybe, definitely has one more round of full endurance. Maybe two. But he will fight from the outside. He's being very patient with Monzone. They feel they can outbox Carlos Monzon. They're leery of the Argentinian's right hand, even though he's, he's tired. Here we go. Round 10. Hagler, can he take advantage of a tired Carlos Monzon? 
Both fighters clash heads. Nothing there. No foul. Here's Hagler. Backing up Munzon. Measuring with the jab. And he misses the right hand and left hook. Munzon lands the jab. Grazing right hand. Hagler looks to come back. Lands a lead cross. Missed the left hook to the body. Munzon misses. Hagler counters. Left hook right hand. And Munzon ties up Hagler. He seems okay. Hagler looking to punch. Lands two jabs from the orthodox stance. Munzon behind the jab. Misses. Hagler comes back. He hooks to the body with a left and a right. Good round for Hagler. Hagler getting in, getting out. And he lands the right cross and a left hook to the body. Munzon backs up. Munzon paws with the jab. Hagler fires, but misses the right hand. There's the bell. We give that round to Marvelous Marvin Hagler. So does the ringside score. The ringside score, again, unofficial scorecard. 97-95 for Hagler. Main event to come. Gene Tunney defends his world championship against George Foreman. They fought to a 12-round draw in their first bout from the Astrodome. Hagler still has four endurance points. Munzone continues to breathe heavily. Round 11, scheduled for 15. World title, the vacant belt on the line. And it's Hagler. Hagler, jab, right hand. Munzone eats both punches. Hagler continues to punch. As Munzone moves forward, they're telling Munzone in his corner, you got to do something, and he is being ratatatted by Marvin Hagler. So it's Hagler, now the boxer, and Munzone... The Pursuer, but Munzone is being hit over and over again. Munzone was able to evade that left hook to the head. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange, favored neither fighter. Munzone goes to the belt line, trying to slow down Hagler. Hagler in sense, comes back with a left hook and a chopping right hand. Munzone moves forward, Hagler sidesteps him. Hagler fires, and left hook, right hand, and Munzone is hurt! Munzone is hurt! Munzone backs towards the ropes. Hagler measuring him. Hagler lands a left right to the body, but nothing to the head. Munzone throws, misses. Hagler throws and misses. There's the bell. That was a round for Hagler for sure. Mark Jones screaming, we want Tunney, we want Tunney. We'll leave Foreman alone. Don't want that smoke just yet. And again, Mark Jones. Friend, confidant, manager, trainer of Primo Canera here at ringside. Canera, tremendous victory from Rome, Italy at Stadio Olimpico. He knocked out Jerry Cooney in a marvelous slugfest. Canera, also the Italian and European heavyweight champion. Round 11. Round 12, excuse me, coming up. Munzone's power, 4. Defense, a 2. Chin, an 8. Will, a 6. Hagler will have one more round of full endurance. The ringside score is giving the last two rounds to Hagler. 10 and 11. Round 9, even. Marvin Hagler is up on the ringside scorer's unofficial scorecard, 107-104. Round 12, fight. And it's Hagler jumping on Munzone. Munzone moving forward. He's got to change the tie to battle, but he's being hit. Hagler ratatats him. Munzone again presses. Hagler lands the lead right. Misses with the left uppercut. Munzone pushes him away. Hagler gets right back in. He fires away. He misses those shots. Munzone comes back with a left right. Hagler looking. Booyah! Left hook to the body. Chopping right hand to the head. Sidesteps the charge of Munzone. Munzone fighting more like Louis Furpo at the moment. Charging, charging, but not landing. Oh, they clash heads. Hagler, major swelling near the left eye. Munzone, nothing. Skin tough as alligator. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, even exchange. Munzone, Hagler blinking from that headbutt. Munzone lands the uppercut, but not the right hand. 30 seconds to go. Munzone punching. Right hand, left hook, right hand. And Hagler staggers up the bat. Oh, that clash of heads changed the tide of battle. Hagler having a lot of trouble seeing from that left eye. And it was a big combination from the pressing Munzone that buckled the knees of marvelous Marvin Hagler. 
but he could not drop Hagler the way his fellow Argentinian Juan Roldan did, though that was a questionable knockdown. <laughs> I saw that fight on HBO, but it was scored a knockdown nonetheless. Hagler goes fatigued. Monzon is tired, but has a little more pep in his step after rattling Marvelous Marvin Hagler at the bell. We prepare for round 13, scheduled for 15. These are the championship rounds. 13, 14, and 15. As you know, the hard luck round. Round 13 asks Jake LaMotta against Sugar Ray Robinson. Ringside score before we start round 13. 10-9, zone. Hagler up 116, 114 unofficially. Here's the bell. Round 13. Both fighters land at ring center. Now it's Hagler with a swollen left eye. That's some bad swelling. He's applying the pressure. And Munzon goes back to being the sniper. Hagler gets in tight. Munzon, again, all octopus arms. Referee Gardner breaks them. Hagler gets inside and he bangs away the left hook, right hook, left hook. And Munzon ties him up. He seems okay. But their excellent scoring combination by marvelous Marvin Hagler. Munzon from distance lands the lead cross and then a left to the body. Munzon tries to establish his jab once again, and there it is. Two jabs and a right hand catches Hagler coming forward. Hagler in tight, a wild combination, unlike Hagler, but he lands. Hagler again works his way inside. Left hook to the body and then up to the head, snapping the Argentinian's head. Munzon slowing down. Hagler bangs away, but misses. No retaliation for Munzon. They tie up, and there's the bell that ends round 13. It seems like both fighters are trying to catch their breath. Hagler's power down to a 5, defense to a 1. Chin's a 9, Will's a 9. Munzon's power's a 3, defense a 2. Chin's a seven, Will is a five. Six more minutes. Six more minutes, who shall claim the vacant middleweight title? They fought to a draw, a 15 round draw in the Astrodome, Houston, Texas. Wow, so round 13 unofficially went to Hagler at, on the ringside scorers scorecard. 126, 123, Munzone. If that scorecard is accurate, Monzon will at least need a knockdown to win a decision and take the final two rounds. Round 14, Hagler working the jab. He's gone southpaw, right jab, left hand. Nice combination, scoring combination. Not a lot of oomph on those punches. Monzon comes back, feints the left. Booyah with the right hand, left hook, right hand. And Hagler buckles, Hagler buckles. Munzone pushes him away. Munzone looking to finish. Right hand, left hook. Hagler is in trouble. Munzone shoves him away again. Munzone lands a left, right. Hagler seems to have reestablished himself. That swelling on that clash of heads had really changed this bout. Both fighters throw and miss. A minute to go. Hagler misses. Munzone counters with a left hook to the body and up to the head. 30 seconds to go. 45 seconds, excuse me. Hagler lands two jabs. Munzone looking. He's measuring, measuring, and booyah with the right cross after the jab. And there's the bell. Unbelievable. After that clash of heads, and that's some bad swelling that the Petronellis have been working on in the Hagler corner. Munzone has come on. We give that round to Munzone. Three more minutes. 135, 133, the ringside score. Again, unofficial. So this is a close fight. This is a close fight. Could it be another draw? Could it be a split decision? Or will someone get knocked out in the final three minutes? Both fighters go to ring center. Referee Dave Garner says, touch gloves. Good luck. Here we go. Here we go, final three minutes. The vacant World Middleweight Championship on the line. Hagler will press. Munzon will work from distance. The bell. It's Hagler getting inside. Bangs away with hooks to the body. Hagler continues to fire. Combination to the body. Hagler throwing hard. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Oh, Hagler got the better of that exchange, snapping the head of Carlos Munzon. Again, a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Both fighters going for it. 
They tie up. They're tired. Referee Gardner breaks them a minute to go. And it's Munzone with a jab and a right hand. Hagler presses forward. Hagler misses. Munzone counters with a left uppercut, snapping the head of Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Final 30 seconds of this bout. And Hagler misses. We go to the scorecards. We have Hagler winning a close bout unofficially. The ringside scorer has Hagler winning a close bout unofficially. They have Hagler 144-143. We have Hagler by two points. Or three. But it's a close fight. This is for the vacant World Middleweight Championship in our universe. Referee Dave Gardner has collected the scorecards from the ringside officials. Hands it over. And now we await the results. 145-141 Hagler. 144-142 Hagler. 143-143 even. The majority decision. The winner and new middleweight champion, marvelous Marvin Hagler from Brockton, Massachusetts. Another close fight, and Carlos Manzone and his corner are very disappointed. But Marvin Hagler claims the vacant title. That last round, Hagler out of the red corner took it on two out of three judges' scorecards. Manzone took round 14 on all three. Hagler took two out of three in round 13. Manzone took all of round 12. Hagler 11 and 10. Manzone took one judge round nine. The other two judges had it even. Round eight went to Hagler two to one via the judges. Manzone took round seven on all the judges' scorecards. Round six, Hagler. Round five, Munzone. Round four, Hagler. Again, that's the knockdown, 10-8. There, That was a huge difference, that knockdown in this fight. Round three, two to one to Hagler via the judges. Round two, one judge Hagler, one judge Munzone, one judge even. Round one, all three judges had it even. But at the end, it was marvelous Marvin Hagler winning the vacant middleweight championship of the world, 145-141, 144-142, 143-143, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 144-142, 
the main event, 15 rounds, World Heavyweight Championship. Tunney the champion, Foreman the challenger, part two. And Tunney takes advantage, stays outside working the jab. That's what Gene wants to do. Foreman gets in punching range. Left hook to the body, right hook to the head. And Tunney slides away. Both fighters throw and miss. Tunney lands on the belt line and moves away. A rare body shot. They want Tunney to work from distance. Both fighters faint but don't throw. Tunney very cautious of the Foreman power, though it was Tunney who dropped Foreman in the first bout. Tunney lands a jab in a right hand. Foreman waiting to land big punches. He gets in and boom, boom. Both fighters land. Tunney moves away. Tunney from distance. Lead right and a left hook to the head of Foreman. And there's the bell. Round one goes to Tunney in our eyes. Tunney with 25 endurance points. Foreman with 13. Ringside score, 10-9 for Tunney. Round two. Foreman looking to be first. Lands the jab. Foreman again fires first. Hook to the body. Right uppercut, left hook to the head. Tunney is hurt. Tunney is hurt. Foreman misses with his big follow-up shots. Tunney on his bicycle. Foreman pursuing his prey. Foreman winging punches and missing. Foreman continues to throw and continues to miss. Tunney on his bicycle. Now he sets down to punch, and he ratatats Foreman with a jab and a right hand. Foreman plods forward, though from distance. Tunney smacks him with the jab. Tunney moves away. Foreman pivoting, but not throwing. Foreman steps forward, and Tunney hits him with a tremendous combination, a four-punch salvo, and there is the bell. One, two, three, four, snapping the head of Big George Foreman. Tunney down to 23 endurance points. Foreman down to 11. Foreman has to land something big here. Round three. We give the first two rounds to Tunney. Both fighters faint, throw, and miss. Tunney establishes the jab. Two jabs, missed with the right hand. Foreman looks to load up. Right cross, left hook, right cross. And blood coming from the nose of Gene Tunney, the champion. Foreman looks to follow up, but he cannot. Again, Foreman wings wild, punches and misses. But you can see the blood from the nose of the champion, Gene Tunney. Tunney goes back to the jab and then lands a right hook. Foreman. Booyah! With the right hand. It was a looping right hand. Left hook grazed the body of Tunney, but Tunney's out of there. Foreman follows up with a hook to the body, but missed this time to the right to the head. Foreman continues to punch. Again, the left hook to the body, but misses the right to the head. Tunney on his bicycle. Tunney sets down, and there's a rat-a-tat two-punch combination from Gene Tunney at the bell. But we give that round to Big George Foreman. Tunney down to 21 endurance points. Foreman to nine. Let's go to the ringside scorer after three. Wow. So they have two rounds for Tunney. Round three even. We gave round three to Foreman unofficially. Round four. Scheduled for 15. World title at stake. And it's Tunney. Tremendous combination. He lets his hands fly. Snapping the head of Foreman over and over again. And Foreman shoves away Tunney. To the amazement of the crowd here at the Superdome. But Tunney continues to punch. And again, a four-punch salvo snaps the head of Foreman. And Foreman just sneers at Tunney, but he is losing this round big. Foreman looks to load up, and he lands a grazing hook to Tunney's head. Tunney on his bicycle, circling side to side, moving. Tunney, there's the jab, but he misses Foreman. Foreman. Booyah! Left hook, right hook. And Tunney... Moves away. Tunney moves away. Foreman follows up with a right cross. It's a looping right hand that hits Tunney. Foreman continues to punch. Foreman lands the hook, but doesn't land it well. Tunney comes back as he goes inside. He ratatats Foreman with a four-punch combination to the head. Foreman takes a step back. Tunney faints. Foreman moves forward, but Foreman throws and misses. Foreman trying to load up with a jab and then the right hand. Foreman does throw the jab pretty straight. Tunney looking to come back as he faints with the jab. He lands a hook to the body, ties up Foreman, and there's the bell. SGJ Jamie has joined us at ringside, still in time to catch the end. This is the main event, my friend. Thank you for your time. Greatly appreciate it.
2019 endurance points. Foreman down to six. Round five, scheduled for 15. Both fighters on the outside. Foreman throws and misses. Tunney, an excellent defensive fighter. You can see on a six roll, it's one through four. You go to the defense chart. Here's Tunney. Tunney lands a jab in the right hand. Tunney boxing beautifully. Foreman again misses his wild punches. Those big punches by George Foreman that miss will tire you out just as much as getting hit. Tunney faints, doesn't throw, moves away. Foreman again tries to load up, and he misses. Right hand, left hook. Foreman starting to breathe pretty heavily. Foreman lands the hook to the body, but not the right to the head. As Tunney was gone, baby gone. Both fighters do not throw. Tunney misses the jab in the right hand. Foreman too tired to counter. At the bell, it's Gene Tunney, rat attack with a 1-2. By a 1-2, we mean the jab and then the right hand followed behind it. Tunney down to 17 endurance points. Foreman down to 4. We give that round to Tunney. The ringside scorer gives it to Tunney. The ringside scorer has not given a round to Foreman. We gave Foreman round 3. We have it 4-1 Tunney. The ringside score has it 401 Tunney, giving round three even. Round six. There's the bell. Tunney takes control. And again, Tunney, he's throwing jab right hand, and it lands. Both fighters throw and miss. Tunney really didn't want to stay there. He was already moving after throwing. Foreman finally gets in some decent punching range, and he lands a good looping right hand. And then a left to the body of Gene Tunney. Foreman lands to the belt line. Tunney's already moving away. Foreman hooks to the body. Right hand missed to the head. Both fighters wing punches. That was Tunney trying to walk Foreman into a right hand. Foreman threw a left hook. Tunney threw a right hand. Both pugilists hit air. About a minute to go here in round six. Here comes Big George. Again, he bangs the body with the left hook. But the right hand misses. Tunney setting down a bit. Big combination by Tunney. It's a four-punch salvo as he wings straight punches, left, right, left, right. And Foreman is in serious trouble. A tie and Foreman goes back towards the ropes. 30 seconds to go. Tunney measuring, and Tunney lands a right and a left hook. Oh, it was a lead right and a left hook snapping the head of George Foreman. Foreman exhaustedly goes back to his corner. Tunney in complete control here, unlike their first bout. Though Tunney did drop Foreman in that first bout. That was a 12-round draw, but this is a 15-round fight. It doesn't look like it's going to go there as Tunney is rat-a-tatting the shit out of George Foreman here. Tunney with 15 endurance points. Foreman with one. This will be his last round of stamina. Tunney in complete control. He's done everything but knock down Big George. Philip Reynolds is here at ringside at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. Hope all is well, Philip. Round seven, Tunney looking to end it. He's in control. Tunney feeling more confident, staying in the pocket a little bit too long. Easy jabs and then hooks to the body. Tunney hanging around, Foreman lands a right cross there. And again, when I say cross, it's a looping punch. Foreman continues to fire. He lands a left hook to the body and a right hook to the head. They're screaming from the Tunney corner. Get back outside, and the Tunney wings with a hook. He misses, no counter by Foreman. Foreman pushes Tunney off balance, misses his shots. Tunney comes back with a nice combination to the body and slides away. Both fighters miss. A minute to go. Tunney establishes the jab again with two jabs and a right hand. They're excellent scoring blows. Foreman, Tunney, they bang one another. At the bell, it's Tunney with a jab, a right hand, and a left hook. And Foreman goes blinking back to his corner. Tunney is just picking apart big George Foreman. Doug Justice said, let's go, Tunney the Fighting Marine from Greenwich, Connecticut. Tremendous effort here by Gene Tunney. He has learned so much since that first bout that was a draw. And Foreman's power drops to a 7 now. Still quite formidable, but it goes from an 11 to a 7. Defense down to a 1. George not known for his defense. Tunney looks fresh as a daisy as we start round 8. And it's Tunney in complete control. Tunney with a jab. And again, he's staying in that pocket. He lands a right to the body. 
Tunney firing away. Same combination. Left jab, right hook to the body. Foreman not throwing. They tie up. Tunney moves away after getting away from Big George. Foreman very tired, not throwing. Tunney just letting the time run away. Now Foreman tries to tie up Tunney. Tunney actually walks Foreman back. Referee Gardner breaks them. Tunney. Jab and a right hand. Tunney back at distance. Foreman looks to land. Misses the big right. Tunney just smiles. Here's Gene. Two jabs smacking Foreman square in the face. Tunney putting on an exhibition here. And there is a hook at the bell. Not much on it. It did land by Big George. But Tunney is just putting on a tremendous exhibition of the science of boxing. We give that round to Tunney. Tunney still with 11 endurance points. Foreman huffing and puffing in his corner. But it doesn't look like he'll be blowing any houses down. But Foreman still has seven punching power. He still has that puncher's chance. Tunney in a complete dominance. Wow, they gave round seven to Foreman. It's kind of close. I didn't give it to Foreman. After eight rounds, the unofficial ringside score has it 79-74. And it's not Foreman getting stronger. It's Tunney. Tunney has an edge. Here we go, round nine. And as I say that, Big George storms out. Wings punches wildly and misses. Tunney just slides away. Foreman continues to fire away. Digs hard to the body. You can hear the thud, thud, thud. Three punches land to the body of Gene Tunney. Tunney back at that jab. Two pecking jabs. They score punches, trying to keep Foreman off balance. A tired Foreman moves forward, and he is rat-a-tatted by Gene Tunney. Left jab, right hand, left hook to the body. But Tunney is staying a little too long in the pocket for my liking. Tunney continues to fire, and again, he hears his corner. They're yelling, Gene, stay at distance. There's three jabs by Tunney. Tunney, booyah, with three more jabs. He's just scoring punches here. Foreman plods forward and eats punches. Oh, and Tunney lands a nice one, two, three combination to the head of Foreman. Foreman takes a step back and slowly moves forward. 30 seconds ago, Big George winds up and grazes Tunney with a wild right uppercut. Tunney still with nine endurance points. Foreman being taken into deep water. And it looks like Tunney's going to drown him. Foreman's power drops to a six now. Will to a six and chin to a six. John Wise, how you doing? Hope all is well. Ringside score after nine rounds has Tunney up 89-83. Again, totally unofficial. We have Tunney up by a sizable margin also. Round 10, scheduled for 15, and it's Tunney behind the jab. Left, right, left hook, right hand, and Foreman is wobbled. This resembles Jimmy Young versus George Foreman in Puerto Rico. Tunney measuring and cannot land the right hand. He landed two nice jabs, but the right hand missed. Tunney in complete control. Foreman on the ropes. Tunney winds up and misses two hard shots. Foreman looks to throw off the ropes, and he lands. Tunney looking to counter, and Tunney actually, with a good stiff right, sends Foreman back into the ropes. The smaller Gene Tunney, the much stronger man at the moment. Foreman throws. Tunney counters again with a right cross. Foreman, no legs, just laying on the ropes. Tunney measuring left and then the right cross. A minute to go here in round 10. Foreman tries to fight his way off the ropes, but he just doesn't have the legs. Both fighters scored effectively. And again, both fighters score effectively. 30 seconds ago, Tunney still has Foreman pinned to those ropes. Big shots by Tunney. He opens up with a five-punch salvo. And there's the bell. As Foreman, a very tired George Foreman, lingers back to his corner. They're telling George in his corner, you need a knockout to win. Tunney is way ahead. Tunney with seven endurance points left. We approach round 11. Foreman's will down to a five. Foreman's TKO, he's already had 68 KO points against. He could be in trouble quite easily. Tunney has not had a TKO point against him. Tunney looking sharp. Foreman still has that six punching power. It started out at an 11, has now dropped to a six. 99-92 after 10 unofficially on the ringside scorer. Round 11. 
Both fighters faint from the outside, ring center. They don't throw. Now it's Tunney being first. Jab, right hand, left hook. Foreman starts the back. Foreman in trouble. Referee Gardner looking on. Tunney looking to stop George Foreman. Tunney lands a lead right. Tunney looking to load up. It's all Gene Tunney. Left hook to the body, right hand to the head. Foreman in a pickle. Right cross lands on Foreman. Foreman looks to retaliate. He misses. Tunney counters with a jab and a right hand. Foreman in trouble. And that is it. That is it. Dave Gardner loops it. And this bout is over. Gene Tunney in quite an impressive fashion. Totally dominates George Foreman in the rematch. And he stops Big George. 155 of round 11. This was one of the most dominant efforts you will see in a title defense or any pugilistic contest. Gene Tunney was a masterful boxer, and then when he had Big George tired and battered, he sat down on his punches and TKO'd Big George on the ropes. Referee Dave Gardner leaped in to stop the onslaught. So Gene Tunney retains his title by stopping Big George Foreman. Let's go. Again, unofficially, we knew Tunney was way ahead. I had Tunney way ahead. Let's go to the fight card. Tunney was, well, 97-93, four points for Tunney. 191, nine points for Tunney. And then judge number three had it very close. Very close, 96-94, but for Tunney. But Gene Tunney was marvelous in this bout. Marvelous. And it looks like Gene will next be facing Sonny Liston. No rest for the uh, weary. But he, we might give him a, a... We might give Gene a... Uh, elective uh, title defense. Maybe he fights Primo Canero. So Gene Tunney retains his title. Here's the official announcement. The winner and still heavyweight champion of the world, Gene Tunney. By TKO at 155 of round... 11. What a fight card here at the Louisiana Superdome Sunday night at the fights. Rocky Graziano wins the vacant USBA middleweight title over 12 rounds by majority points decision. 115-112, 115-112, 114-114, 1-14, even over Thomas the Hitman Hearns. We had Hearns by one point, but it was a very close fight. Could go either way. Sonny Liston knocked a TKO'd, excuse me, Jess Willard. A game Jess Willard lasted into the 8th at the 221 mark. But Sonny Liston retains his USBA title and continues his march towards a title shot and Gene Tunney. Marvin Hagler in a rematch with Carlos Manzone adds after they fought to a draw initially for the vacant world middleweight title. Won a majority points decision, 145-144, 144-142, and 143-143 even. So Hagler claims the vacant middleweight title of the world. And Gene Tunney stops George Foreman in the rematch after they fought to a 12-round draw. This was a 15-round bout. Tunney wouldn't need 15 rounds. He gets his second stoppage. Remember, he stop, stopped Lennox Lewis for the vacant title. Now he stops George Foreman in the rematch after the draw in the 11th round. As he was battering Foreman on the ropes, referee Dave Gardner stopped the bout. So let's, and they added some new functions. You can create your own fighter. I'll fool around with that. So you can create all kinds of fighters, whether real or fictional, cartoon characters, politicians, whatever you want to do, you can create. That's kind of cool. I like that option. Let's go back to our universe. And let's just go to the heavyweight rankings real quick. So Gene Tunney is the champion. Sonny Liston is the number one contender. Larry Holmes has yet to fight in our universe. Uh, Jack Johnson got knocked out in one round, so he's we're not using him for a while. Joe Lewis could be uh, interesting for uh, Gene Tunney. Sonny Liston, though, is the number one contender. Gene, we might give him an elective uh, defense against Primo Canera. Canera's actually been quite good. Primo ranked 35th in the world. His only loss was the Cooney, close decision loss. But then he would come back after winning the European title from Frank Bruno. He knocked out Jerry Cooney in a slugfest in Rome, Italy. So maybe Primo gets a title shot. He's 6-1-0, and oh, five knockouts, European and Italian champion. I think good old Primo deserves a title shot. 
He's won fights I didn't think he was winning. I think our next fight card will be for the Commonwealth heavyweight title, George Chavallo. 3-0 and with three knockouts. He TKO'd Henry Cooper off. Uh, it wasn't a televised bout in the third round. He's going to take on Lennox Lewis, who fought for the vacant world title and lost. Where is our good friend Lennox Lewis? There he is. And Lewis, that was his last fight, but prior to that, he was undefeated. So he is the British and English champion. So maybe we have a fight card from either Montreal or Toronto or Wembley for the Commonwealth title. Put a couple of fights underneath it. There you have it. Let's go back here and here. What a fight card. Graziano wins, Liston wins, Hagler wins, and Gene Tunney wins. As Mark Jones says, primo, primo, primo. Thank you very much. Health and happiness. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. I greatly appreciate your time. Treat people the way you want to be treated. If you enjoyed the stream, please hit that like button. It does help us out with the algorithms and more people discovering my channel, which also helps the community because they'll discover other channels. And as I always say, support one another. Thank you to Mark Jones, D. Scott Howard, SGJ Jamie, Doug Justice, John Wise, Cutter Historical, Sports Time Machine, our good friend Mr. Utah Mike. As the virus thingy is doing its check. Uh, scroll up, scroll up. Cleve Baseball Fan 879, Dave Gardner. And our good friend, Steeler Fan 1933 a.k.a. Matt. We'll have some Glory Days boxing coming up in the near future. And uh, we're going to do some Title Bout 2 also on the PC in the near future and get back to Title Bout Championship Boxing, which was featured on Cutter Historical's channel. So please check that out. Also check out Dave Gardner's YouTube channel. And of course, of course Digital to Dice with Ron Juckett on Spreaker or wherever fine podcasts can be listened to. And our good friend, Mr. Utah Mike, check out his wonderful channel. Cleve Baseball Fan, another wonderful content creator in our community. So support our community because we're a fun community. We're a welcoming community. We're an open arms community. Thank you again. God bless. Stay safe. Be smart. You know what's coming.